Hey guys, also welcome to another video of mine. It's Kamal Double A, and this is another video of mine. Now, obviously, this is a new segment to my channel. I've decided to do these. Of you know, I made a post about this. What would you guys like me to do for like extra content? F you know, freshen things up, do new content, and this is a very, very good suggestion. Tactical analysis before every single weekend game. Now, this is exactly what I'm going to do a tactical analysis on how. I believe we can beat Manchester City tomorrow, which will be taking place at the Etihad, 4 p.m. kickoff. Um, but yeah, my plan is to basically make these every single week instead of a preview. I think it's much more better, um, more analysing. It's better for you guys. You get more of a tactical insight. And I think previews are just a bit more boring. And you know, it's kind of a. I've been doing it for a while, so maybe freshen things up. Midweek, I can't really promise them because obviously school is hard because I have to make the thumbnail, I have to research a lot. A lot of research takes place for this, analysing how we can potentially beat them, looking at the de every single little detail, how the opposition will line up. So it takes a bit of time researching. So mid um, on the weekend, 100%, this is a part of a new segment on my channel. So hopefully you do, guys. You guys do enjoy it. Midweek, I can't make no promises, but some occasions definitely. And the reviews will be doing the same. After every single game, I'll be making a review, giving my judgment on the game. Before we get into it, also don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new around here, and um, also don't forget to check out my Twitter. Uh, social media links will be in the description below. And yeah, before without further ado, let's get straight into it now. Tactical analysis: How do we beat Manchester City? Now, obviously, I couldn't have started this video any more harder. Manchester City away at the Etihad, but I've got some plans. And hopefully, Sari is thinking similar. Obviously, obviously, Sari's got you know. He knows his trade, he knows exactly how to prepare for this game. He did it exactly at the bridge back in December. But I have got my lineup that I believe that we should be going for this game. And I've got what I believe Man City will be going for this game. And I've got specific tactical points after each bit. So I've got my, all, all my notes prepared now. Regarding Chelsea, this is how I think we'll line up. Kepa, Arifa, Balaga in goal. Four backs of Aspilagueta and Emerson. Uh, two centre-backs of David Luiz and Andres Christian. This is how I want to line up. Jorginho as the register. Kante, Ruben off the cheek. Front three of Hazard, Higuain and Willian. Now that's how I want to line up. Not necessarily how Sarri's going to line up. But if we line up like this and if we you know, stick to the tactical points that I've mentioned, then we have definitely have a chance. Now, if we slip... Uh, you know, switch over to Manchester City's eleven that I believe they're going to line up. Edison in goal, uh, Kyle Walker right back, two centre backs for uh, John Stones and Otto Mendy because company is injured and also Laporte is playing at left back. And obviously Benjamin Mendy's got a, a massive long term injury. Fabian Delph hasn't really been favoured for the Pep Guardiola system. Laporte played against Liverpool, played against Arsenal at left back position. He's been fantastic there. So Laporte will be playing at left back, meaning Otto Mendy goes in centre back position. Fernandinho is at DM that register. Fernandinho is key by the way. Because if Manchester City win, Fernandinho will play a big part in this. Two midfielders of David Silva and Bernardo Silva slash KDB. KDB didn't really play against Everton, so he's nice and ready for this game. I suspect that KDB will be playing. Or Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva has been excellent. Pep Guardiola did say that it's impossible to drop him. So one of them will definitely play. And in the front three of Raheem Sterling, Sergio Aguero and Leroy Sane. Like so Rad Mahrez coming off the bench. But quickly going back to Chelsea. Now the key points that I made was the fullbacks. The fullbacks is crucial. It's going to be a massive fullback battle. Obviously, Manchester City, they're in, you know, their latter stages of their project. They're much more ahead of us. They've got their forced, uh, their, you know, their preferred fullbacks. We have and we've got to do. So it's got to, you know, use what he has. But the reason why I have Emerson, it's crucial, it's key. And the reason why Alonso doesn't play for him because if Alonso plays, we're in deep trouble. You, we know that positionally he's atrocious. He can't get back in time because of his, he's too slow. He's not. He can't recover in time. The likes of Sterling, Kyle Walker bombing forward when those fullbacks bomb forward for Manchester City, overlapping the wingers, the inside wingers. I'll get onto that in a minute. Walker bombing at Alonso. Raheem Sterling bombing at Alonso. You've got likes of Sergio Aguero. He's going to be finished. And with Alonso bombing forward because he likes to make his inside infield runs, he's going to be caught out on the break. And going for Alonso, in my opinion, will be a suicide mission. If Alonso does start, we have to be defensively solid like the first game. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Jorginho has to tuck in more. Loftus-Cheek has to go more to left-hand side to help out Alonso. And what I would do if Alonso plays is I would swap Willian Hazard constantly throughout the game. Because Willian, as we know, I mentioned his last point... Um, his work rate is phenomenal. He's much better. He presses high. He, cl he gets close to his man by swapping Hazard and William constantly throughout the games. He can help out Alonso defensively and he won't be so exposed defensively. But personally, we can save all that and we can go with Emerson. He can bomb forward, overlap Hazard, the wingers, etc. Pacey. 
very, very good position. He's good defending. He can, you know, take on likes of Sterling and Walker. That's your perfect fullback for this game. I hope Sorry chooses Emerson. And then, obviously, like I said, I'll go on from Christensen and Luis as a back partner, centre back partnership now. You know, you're probably thinking, you know, why is Rüdiger not playing? But I'll be honest, Rüdiger's been poor lately. Now, I'm one of his biggest fans. Last, you know, four to six weeks, he hasn't been good enough. He's been out of form. Yeah, as a, as a partnership, Christensen and David Luiz were fantastic against Huddersfield last weekend. Um, Andrews Christensen was, was phenomenal. You know, you could argue it's just the opposition. It's only Huddersfield, but I want to see this combination more. Rüdiger has been poor, so why not put Christensen in? Um, I think they could work really well as a centre-back partnership. So, yeah, that's what I would go for. I think that with them two trying to control Aguero, I think will be a good idea. Um, they're going to have to be defensively solid. I don't want any slip-ups, no mistakes. The back four have to be solid because we're going to get pressurised heavily. Now, Jorginho. Now, with Jorginho, I would have him sitting deep in that midfield. I would have him just in front of Christian Luiz because Aguero is going to be you know, moving around the half space as well as Sane and Sterling are going to be like inside forwards. That's how Pep Guardiola plays with Walker and Laporte as the overlapping fullbacks, overlapping the wingers. Um, so Jorginho has to slip a little bit deep to give that extra man, that extra support. That's what I'll personally do. And also I'll play Loftus-Cheek for this game to the Barkley because Loftus-Cheek, he's more aggressive, he's very, very physical. He can probably man-mark Fernandino because he's much more physical. But also he can link up the play between that defence and that attack because he's that proper number eight, can link up the play. I just think Cover and Barkley, they're not proper number eights. They're hard to link up. What I would do, however, is later during the game, the 60th, 65th minute, if we're winning or we're drawing or whatever, Bring on Kovacic for the control because Kovacic, he brings control. He links up the play of Hazard as well with midfield. But Loftus-Cheek, he goes on those charging ones. He's much more physical, aggressive, can take on like so Fernandinho. And he can, he's a proper ball carrier. Could good link up with the uh, left-hand side of Emerson, Hazard, Loftus-Cheek. So I think Loftus-Cheek would be a smart idea to go for this. Because like I said, links up the attack and the defence. Now, like I said, bring on cover later for the control, for the link up, etc. Now, that's regarding Chelsea. Now, obviously, Kigua and I question, scored a brace against Huddersfield. That's a lineup I would go for for Chelsea, and that's the tactics. Obviously, the fullbacks have to be on point. They have to bomb at the right times, and they have to come back and defend at the right times. Emerson has to play, that's crucial. Loftus Cheek has to play for that physicality, that aggression to man Mike Fernandino. I'll, I'll get on to the next bit in a minute as to why. And Jorginho may be sitting a little bit deeper to give that extra support. And Christian and Luis, centre back partnership, that's what I want. And if Alonso is playing, like I said, William Hazard to continually swap wings. Again, onto Manchester City. I've gone over their lineup. And the reason why Fernandino is extremely key for Manchester City is because the way he pressurises. Now, he's that classic DM, but the perfect one for Pep Guardiola. His pressurising is fantastic. What he does is he's done this against Liverpool, he's done it against Arsenal, and many other occasions where he basically presses the opposition's build ups as we build up from the attack. The centre backs and keeper builds. He pressurises the ball and he basically wins the ball back from deep, helps the defensive line and matches the city and then builds attacks from there. He's a fantastic player, he's been fantastic this season. At the age of 33, he's still really good, really, really good as well. But Fernandino, we have to watch him because he's going to be crucial, going to try and dictate the game for Manchester City. So I think that having Loftus-Cheek is crucial. We're going to need Loftus-Cheek's physicality and aggression to man mark Fernandino. Now, with David Silva, David Silva might be helping out as well. He's going to be that deep line playmaker alongside Fernandino, allowing either Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne in that attacking mid, roaming around those half spaces and creating havoc in that final third. So Jorginho, like I said, has to sit deep, not only to watch out Aguero and the inside fours of Sane and Sterling, but the fact that Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne could also be lingering around. So we need that defensive support. Um, Kante has to be on this game, that proper box to box midfielder. The only way we can win this is if Kante is on this game, which I'm confident he will. That perfect box to box, bombing forwards, attacking wise, really, really good to see and defending as well. When he comes back to defend, has to help Alas Jorginho when Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva are on the ball. Um, and yeah, then, like I said, we're getting on to, on to the wingers. Raheem Sterling and Leroy Son, like I mentioned earlier, the inside forwards, they cut inside. The fullbacks and overlaps to basically provide the width for the attack. But Sane and Sterling, they cut inside. They try and move within the half spaces to try and, you know, get past likes of Louise, Christians and etc. So we're going to watch out for that. That's how Pep Guardiola likes to play when he's attacking. And Walker... And Laporte, extremely good crosses of the ball. So we've got to watch out as well for the aerial threat of Sergio Aguero because he's very, very good aerially. And uh, we've got to watch out, like I said, Azpi and Emerson have to be on their game. They have to be on point. It's going to be absolutely vital and crucial that they're playing really, really well. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, like I said, the fullbacks have to be slightly defensive for our side. 
But that's how Manchester City will be tactically set up for Nandidi. will be crucial for the game. The wingers will be inside forwards. Obviously, four-backs bombing forwards, overlapping. Uh, Bernard, David Silva helping up Belay, that deep-line playmaker. And then, obviously, Bernardo Silva, KDB, whoever starts, will be roaming around half spaces, creating havoc, passing, etc. Finals passing out. So, we've got to be very, very cautious. We have to press hard. We need to know when to attack. We need to make sure that we defend resolutely. We have to defend as a unit, start from the attack to the defense, pressurize properly, play out from the back. No silly errors, no mistakes. And we can definitely, definitely get a result from this game. Hopefully, sorry. Um, has obviously got a game plan. Hopefully we can do a job on them. If you did enjoy this video and if you want more of this kind of segment, this kind of style, leave in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. And I'll see you guys for my next video. Peace.